Lane. Uh, he is the MHA for Mount Pearl Southlands, and he's on line one. Paul Lane, how are you doing? Daryl, I'm doing great. How about yourself? Boy, sure, these, these, these are the best weeks of my life, but when I'm sitting in this chair, getting to talk to everybody. Absolutely, absolutely. It's, 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 it's a privilege you have there. Hey, listen, don't think I don't know it. I enjoy I know, I every single do. minute of it. I know you do. Anyway, uh, there are so many things that I could speak about tonight. I, I got to be honest with you. I'm very upset over the, the whole uh, Nelcor story today and the 67 million. But I'm going to save that uh, for another call because I did uh, have a plan to call tonight to talk about uh, long-term care, and I do want to stick to that. Um, so, Daryl, uh, you know, as you know, we've had an ongoing, uh, I guess, concern and issue here in the province when it comes to the availability of long-term care beds. And certainly uh, in this region of the province, um, you know, this was something that I and others pointed out uh, during Budget 2016 when the provincial government uh, decided at the time that they were going to shut down uh, Masonic Park, mm -hmm. which was a level three, they had a level three nursing home uh, up there. And, uh, and uh, you know, they did it, I think, to save like a million bucks. Um, of course, they said it had nothing to do with money, that, uh, you know, there was plenty of spaces available and so on. Uh, we told them at the time that it had everything to do with uh, budget cuts, had nothing to do with available space. They did accommodate the residents at Masonic Park. Uh, it's some additional beds which got opened up at the uh, uh, Miller Center. But, uh, but that did not address the fact, as, as was said, that uh, there was a tremendous lineup of people besides those people that have been waiting an inordinate amount of time to uh, to receive long-term care. And I guess what prompted my call tonight, because I've called on this a couple of times, but what prompted my call tonight is I, I have a, a, another constituent of mine who, uh, you know, who has been sitting now in a hospital bed going on two months, uh, well, he, well, he's been in there longer than that because he was in there for a month that he needed to be, you know, in hospital getting treated for his uh, illness. But since that time, uh, he could have been discharged going on two months ago now uh, into long-term care. But he continues to sit in an acute care bed in the hospital um, awaiting a long-term care bed. Now, in the meantime, you know, this is an elderly, elderly gentleman. And, uh, you know, he's not at a stage now where he needs to be in a hospital bed, so he's being deprived of what will be his new home. He's being deprived of, you know, all of the, um, you know, uh, recreational services and other uh, programs and, and that that he needs at a long-term care facility while he is just lying there uh, in a uh, acute care bed. Not to mention the fact that there are people who are waiting to get into hospital, uh, you know, that... Uh, they can't get in to get procedures done and surgeries and everything else because there's no beds available because of this gentleman and I'm told many other people who have been there even longer periods of time waiting on long-term care. So I just want to put it out there that this continues to be a problem for many people. We are continuing to have citizens who are sitting in acute care beds when they shouldn't be. They need long-term care. They're not getting it, and they're not receiving the services that come with that. And as a result, we're tying up acute care beds when there's people who desperately need them to get procedures done and so on. And when you hear about people down in emergency, out in the hallways, on stretchers, and all those situations, this is a big reason why this is happening, because beds are being tied up with people that shouldn't be in them. And it's like uh, it's creating two problems, because there's people who need the care in the hospital, and uh, there's the people who actually need... Don't no longer need the services of the hospital, but want to be put into a place where they can live out their days peacefully, Correct. and that uh, they're de denied the opportunity. And this is a story that, uh, you know, your friend. This is not the first time I've heard this story, Paul. This seems to be the norm. Uh, unfortunately, it is the norm. Um, I did put in an access to information a number of months back. I, I, I wish I had it in front of me now, but I don't. But uh, there was a tremendous wait and a tremendous number of people who were in this exact same situation. Some people were waiting up to a year um, in a bed uh, in a hospital when they shouldn't be. And obviously this continues to, uh, to uh, be a problem. And I guess, like I said, what highlighted it for me once again is, of course, I tried to help this gentleman 
but uh, you know, because he's a constituent of mine. But when I checked into it, of course, I mean, I can't, you know, I can't create beds that don't exist no more than anybody else can. The problem is, is that uh, the problem is, is that we just don't have the available space. And again, it goes back to what you know what I said. I know what my colleague Steve Kent said at the time because it was actually in his district, Masonic Park is in Mount Pearl North, and we were saying at the time that. Uh, uh, Masonic Park never should have been shut down, and there was so much disruption caused there to the people who had been living there for years and so on, and used to the staff and used to the facility yeah. and all the disruption that caused. And as we had predicted and said at the time, that uh, you know, even though they accommodated those individuals in additional beds, they opened up at the uh, at the um, 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 Veterans Pavilion that uh, that did not address the fact that there were still many people waiting for beds, and those could be beds that would be available that which are now not uh, available because Masonic Park sits up there mothballed. And, and not uh, to mention the fact that... poor decision right from the start. And with family members who, were, you know, many of those residents probably spent their lives in Mount Pearl, and uh, right. it was easy for people to pop in because it was right. like... That's the would seem to be the way to do it to keep the neighborhood uh, alive, where people can live out their days in the community that they grew up in, and uh, right. they're probably getting less visitors because people say, "I'm not going all the way down there." Well, that's uh, I'm sure that that's part of it. It's very disruptive to them. It's disruptive to the family. It was disruptive to the staff that were there, and of course, you know, well, you know, you got to imagine now you have people in a facility at the time like Masonic Park. I mean, there was people there because I used to be. I used to go there regularly um and uh and i mean we had residents there that were in their 90s we had two or three that were in like over 100 years old and had been there for you know um many years and it was really a sin what was done to those people to just yank them out of there and throw them into uh you know into a situation where they were in a uh, you know an environment that they weren't used to with people they weren't used to and everything and it was a sin to do it and uh totally unnecessary and now as we're seeing ever since that decision, um, you know, it was a bad move from day one because there continues to be people waiting for long-term care, and we don't have, we simply do not have the beds available to, uh, you know, to accommodate them. And, you know, as we both said, and I'll just repeat, uh, it's causing a problem for people who uh, ought to be in long-term care, but yet they're just sitting in a hospital bed where they, they don't want to be, they don't need to be, and it's really not the best situation for them, and at the same time tying up a hospital bed at much greater cost while there's people that need procedures that are not getting in to get those procedures because there's no beds, mm. and while there's people in the emergencies out in the hallways on stretchers, uh, you know, with the little to no dignity afforded to them. So, we have, like, uh, an aging population too, Paul, so this problem yep. is going to get worse before get it gets worse. better. It's only going to get worse, and it comes down, ultimately it comes down to planning. And, you know, nobody can say that we didn't see this coming. Uh, we absolutely did, and we know that it's only going to, uh, this problem is only going to get bigger as time goes on. And so, you know, we need to start addressing uh, these issues. Paul, thanks for this tonight. Or, uh and there's two calls made about long about long term care, and uh, it's an important topic for this province and the people of this province. And uh, I'm glad you brought it up. Yeah, not a problem. And I guess I'll try to get a call with Patty now to talk about this uh, 67 million that uh, that got blown there uh, in Maymont, and uh, I'm absolutely disgusted by that. But I'll, I'll save that for another call. And Daryl, always a pleasure talking to you. You too, Paul. Take care, bud. Bye bye. Thank you. Have a good one. Bye.